All right, we're going to talk about binomial random variables and how to calculate their probabilities. So um, first thing we need to understand is when are we in a binomial situation? Okay, it's called a Bernoulli setting named after a mathematician named Bernoulli. They're actually a family of mathematicians that were all brilliant. Okay, um, but the first thing is, is it needs to be binary. There are exactly two options. So like a coin flip is obviously binary, heads or tails, but rolling a dice can be binary. I roll a single die. What's the, I either roll a five or I don't. If I roll two dice, I roll higher than eight or I don't. Okay. Or if you think about the, uh, the banana game, the uh, last banana, either player A wins or player B wins success or fail. Exactly two options. All right. Um, so anything can be success or failure. And, uh, I, ha I worked with a guy, actually the, the foul shooter guy who claimed to be 90% and only made four out of 10. He used to say, oh, everything's 50-50. Either you roll a five or you don't. And what he was really saying was everything is binary. Everything can be treated as binary, um, but it's not necessarily 50-50. All right. Second is independent, where if we know about one variable, it does not influence the other. And there's an exception to this rule. Um, and it's this, it's a, called a 10% rule. And as long as my sample is less than 10% of my population, the probabilities don't change by much is what the argument is. So in a deck of cards, if I draw, like the probability of an ace is four out of 52. If I draw a card, now my probability is either three out of 51 or four out of 51. My probability of the next, the second card being an ace has changed. And so knowing about the first card that I draw affects what the second card might be, okay? So um, for deck of cards, 10% of the population would be 5.2 cards. So as long as I grab five cards or less, we could treat them as if they're independent, okay? M&Ms, there's technically a finite number of M&Ms in the world, but it's theoretically infinite. And so like grabbing an M&M and having it be orange, there's still countless M&Ms left that the probability of the next one being orange really hasn't changed all that much, okay? Um, so the 10% rule is independence or at least, or at most 10% of your population. Then the number of trials is fixed. And this is really the key to, um, to a Bernoulli trial. It'll be like out of 10 foul shots, okay? Um, out of a dozen eggs, out of this many trials, blah, blah, blah. Okay. A fixed number of trials and then the same probability of success on each trial. So the foul shots that we talked about earlier, um, for Mr. Brown, the probability of success on each foul shot was 90% and the probability of failure was 10%. And theoretically it's independent. Some people talk, argue about a hot hand, in which case you could argue against independence. Although it's been statistically shown that there's no such thing as a hot hand. Um, it's just the streakiness that comes up in probabilities. And the number of trials was fixed because he was taking 10 foul shots. So what's the probability of making four or fewer, we could ask, all right? So I wanna start thinking about counting things and where do these formulas come from? So first of all, there's something called the binomial coefficient. It looks like this. Um, I learned it as NCR like this. Um, oh, I think I have a typo here. This should be for C1. Um, how many ways could I correctly guess on four multiple choice questions? Okay. So each guess, I could guess correctly. There's a problem. First one, I guess correct or wrong. And it's 0 0.2, 0 0.8. And then the second one, I can guess correct or wrong. And it's 0 0.2 or 0 0.8. And then the third one, I could guess correct or wrong. And it's 0 0.2 or 0 0.8. And then the fourth one, I could guess correct or wrong. And it's 0 0.2, right? And there's four questions. All right. Um, and correct, 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 correct only happens on one of these branches. There's 16 branches, two to the fourth options, because there's two options each time. Two to the fourth is 16. If I did this whole tree diagram, there'd be another bunch of branches and we'd have 16 total branches. All right. Of those, how many would have three correct and one wrong? Well, here's one correct, 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 wrong, but there would be another three of them because I could go correct, correct, wrong, correct, correct, wrong, correct, correct, or wrong, and then correct, correct, correct. So right, wrong, correct, correct, correct. Um, there's four different ways that that can happen. And then there's six different ways of this and four and one. And you can see right here, those numbers, one, four, six, four, one, 
one, four, six, four, one are part of Pascal's triangle. Okay. Um, and so we can count it using factorial. So like four choose one. Um, if I did that, four choose one, it would be four factorial over one factorial, four minus one factorial and four factorial. Um, this is three factorial. So I'm going to do four times three times two times one is just three factorial one times three factorial and we would just get four. Now I'm not super worried about this because your calculator knows how to do it and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Okay. But um, one thing I want to mention, when I go down all of these four different methods will all be 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.8. They'll all be the same product and since multiplication is commutative, whether I put the 0.8 there or there or there or there, it doesn't really matter. But it's always 0.2 cubed times 0.8. There's just four ways I can do it. And that's where this sort of formula comes about. The probability that x equals k, how many ways? Well, there will be k successes and the rest of them, n minus k, will be failures. Okay. So we see p and 1 minus p, or often it'll be p and q. Okay. Um, when we're reading binomial problems, it's the n observations, fixed observations, probability p of success on each observation, okay? It'll often be the probability of k successes in n trials is how it'll be worded, except for it might be in context, or it might be at least k or at most k, all right? So those are the words you want to look for when you're recognizing a binomial setting, all right? Um, so Here's an example just to finish this off. An engineer chooses a simple random sample of 10 switches from a shipment of 10,000. Suppose, he doesn't know, but 10% of the switch, switches in the shipment are bad. And he counts the number of bad switches in the sample. They'll often do this because they say, oh, if there's more than one faulty um, switch, we're going to return the shipment because this simple random sample should be representative. And if there's more than more than one, then that means like approximately 20% of all these switches are faulty, in which case if you're trying to sell them or build something that you rely on these switches, you don't want to have 2,000 of them be faulty, okay? So they'll set like a, a litmus test of, I'm going to test 10 of them and how many would cause me to return it. So how many could I have fail? I could have zero fail, in which case they all work. Or I could have one fail, or all the way across here, I could have as many as 10 fail, all right? Um, I just like to sketch the model a little bit, because here, what's the probability that no more than one? So probability that x is less than or equal to one. That's the probability that x equals zero, or x equals one. Really, it's these two boxes is what I'm trying to fill in their probabilities, and I can always calculate them then one at a time. So this first one is... 10 choose zero failures and i would have um the failure happen zero times no 10 times um no the failure happened zero times i was right the first time and the success happened all 10 times right and this one 10 choose one there's 10 different ways that that could happen and i would have one failure and nine successes. All right. And that's just applying this formula. Now on my calculator, I could, um, where's my calculator? There we go. Um, I would say 10 math, you go over to probability, choose zero oh, times um, 0 0.1 to the zero. That's just going to come out to one and 0.9 to the 10th plus 10 math, choose one times 0.1, here's my one failure, and times, oh, I gotta get out of that exponent, times my nine successes. Boom, and we get about 0.736. So um, if he did many, many, many trials of this, um, 73.6% of the time he would find, um, there's a three in there, 73.6% of the time, no more than one would fail and he would keep the shipment. And the other 26.4% of the time, he would reject the shipment because too many of them failed, okay? Because all these guys add up to 20, 
6.4. All right. So good luck on your homework and farewell.